I want to talk to you just for a couple of minutes. We've had a, a, a busy, busy morning and a uh, wonderful time of worship, setting the, the atmosphere and the culture for, for Christmas. And uh, I, want to, I want to show you a video of one of my kids. Um, many of you know that uh, on September 14th, my oldest, uh, our oldest son, Austin, was in a traumatic uh, accident down in the Keys. He was in a coma for uh, over 40 days in Miami. He was airlifted to Atlanta's uh, Shepherd Center where he's been uh, in recovery for the past 92 days. Well, I was up there in Atlanta with him uh, this week. I'm getting ready to fly back in just a few, few hours. But uh, Austin wanted to send a special message to all of you for your beautiful prayers. And uh, this is my boy, Austin George, with a message for the church. Hey, Pond Castle. This is Austin George. I'm up here in Atlanta, Georgia. Just want to say thank you for all the love and support. I really appreciate it. Please keep the prayers coming. They definitely help. Um, I'm going in for my last surgery here in the next couple of days. Um, hopefully I'll be out of here shortly and back to Orlando. Just want to say thank you. But thank you very much. Take care. I love you all. See ya. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you for your prayers. He has surgery uh, sometime this week, and hopefully uh, he will be back in town probably mid-February. But he wanted to do that video to thank every single one of you uh, for, your, uh, for your prayers. It means an awful lot, so thank you uh, so much. Let's talk about uh, the shepherds. Um, I like the story of the shepherds when it comes to the Christmas story. Because, you see, shepherds were the outcasts. The shepherds were the, were the guys that nobody wanted on their team. But yet God, in his infinite wisdom, chose the shepherds to be a part of the Christmas story. You see, the shepherds were the, the underdogs. They were the ones that no one picked. And yet God, in his beautiful grace, chose the shepherds to be a part of the Christmas story. Now, uh, back in January, we had the chance to go to the Holy Land for uh, a, a trip, and we had an encounter with some sheep and the shepherds. And I want the guys to go ahead and show those photos. I just want to kind of show you uh, the, the sheep. And there they are. There's, that's my own special photography. There's, there's Pastor Scott and the sheep. Notice how big they are. Uh, they're dirty. They're big. Go ahead to the next slide, guys. Beautiful sheep and shepherds. There they are in the mud, in the dirt. And then there is me trapped by the sheep. <laughs> Surrounded by the sheep, and my only way out of that situation was to get on a camel and <laughs> flee the sheep. Nobody wanted the shepherds. They were the outcasts of society, but God in his beautiful wisdom and grace chose the shepherds to be part of the Christmas story. You see, the wise men, they were the elite. They were the upper class. It was the wise men that were the, they were the working class. They were the, they were the ones that no one wanted, and yet God in his beautiful wisdom picked the shepherds to be part of the Christmas story story. You have your notes this morning. I want to give you just quickly five points that I believe that we can derive from this beautiful story of the shepherds in the Christmas story. It's called a prayer of peace. Everyone say peace with me. So if you'll get your notes out and you can follow along, I'm going to be real brief here this morning, but I want to talk about a prayer of peace. You see, peace is living in a state of contentment. And the shepherds, when the angels showed up to the shepherds, they were scared. They were freaking out. They were not in a state of peace, but the, the, the angels spoke a peace over those shepherds. Peace is living in a state of contentment. Another, another definition of peace is not to be at war. Now watch this. Christmas is a wonderful time for you and I to live in peace and not be at war. You see, there's a lot of people, they're at war with God, they're at war with themselves, 
They're at war with others, and they're at war with their past. And the message of Christmas to the shepherds is, I want you to live a life of peace. So here's your first point. Peace happens, number one, when you and I learn to conquer fear with courage. Look what it says there in in, in Luke chapter 2. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. And the angel said to the shepherds, do not fear. You see, if you are going to live at peace this Christmas season, you and I need to learn to conquer fear with courage. Do not be afraid. Let me ask you a question this morning. What are you afraid of? What's your greatest fear? Is it having something happen to your child? Is it having something happen to your finances? Is it having something to do with your job or relationships? Whatever your greatest fear is, the message of Christmas is, if you're going to live at peace, do not fear. you got to believe that God is in charge. Can I get an amen? Now watch this. When life throws you a curveball, and by the way, how many know that when you have a son that is in a coma for 40 days, that's a major curveball, amen? But when life throws you a curveball, you can react either one of two ways. You can react in fear and being terrified, or you can react in faith, believing that God is in charge. And when the angels spoke to the shepherds, their message was, if you're going to live at peace, I want you to live by faith. Do not be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. God is in charge of every detail of your life. God knows your days. God knows every hair on your head, and he wants you today, this Christmas season, to face fear with courage. God, you're in charge. I don't understand what's going on. I don't really like it a whole lot, but I'm choosing to respond in faith and not in fear. Can I get an amen? Number two, if you're going to walk in peace this Christmas season, watch this. You need to worship with thankful hearts. What I like about the shepherds is their first response when the angels came and they were afraid, they started to worship with thankful hearts. Let me ask you a question this morning. What are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? Because the spirit of Christmas, and if you're going to live in peace, you need to figure something to be thankful for, and you need to focus on that, and you need to worship with thankful hearts. And that's what the shepherds did. They started to sing. They started to worship. Why? Because they were thankful. Can I tell you something? We all have a lot to be thankful for. Can I get an amen? And when you begin to thank God and begin to worship him, your heart is filled with peace, even in the midst of fearful times. Choose to be thankful for something that God has given you this Christmas season. I can tell you this. This this Thanksgiving... I've had uh, 57 of them. This was the most thankful uh, Thanksgiving season for the George family. We didn't have the fanciest dinner. We were eating in a cafeteria. My son was in a wheelchair. We were living in a different city. But I tell you, we sat down and had that Thanksgiving meal. Our hearts were filled with gratitude. And if you're going to walk through this Christmas season, One of the best ways you can receive peace from God is to have a thankful heart. Can I get an amen? Number three, real quickly. Bruce, if you can go to the keyboard. If you're going to live in peace this Christmas season, one of the ways that you can do that is to live at harmony with all men. The message in the song that the shepherds sang was, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, good will to all. All men. You see, if you're going to enjoy peace this Christmas season, you've got to make the decision to live in harmony with all men. I like that word harmony. Have you ever heard someone who sings and they're out of tune or they're out of key and it's not very harmonious? Maybe it's the person next to you this morning that was singing. I don't know. 
But there's something beautiful when people sing and they're all in harmony in one accord. There's beauty when people live together in harmony. And the message of Christmas, and if you're going to live at peace this Christmas season, you've got to choose to live in harmony with all men. Now, chances are here today, there's some of you here today that you are not living in harmony with all men. There's bitterness, there's resentment, there's anger, there's disappointment. People have stabbed you in the back, people have spoken ill of you, people have hurt your feelings and you're wounded and you're, you're scarred. The message of Christmas is to live at peace and to live in harmony with all men. And the shepherds sang it, glory to God in the highest, Peace on earth, good will to all men. You see, when you are living in harmony with all men, there's peace on earth. And when there's peace on earth, God gets the glory. God gets the glory when you forgive. God gets the glory when you release someone who's hurt you. God gets the glory when you live in harmony, and you've got to make that decision this Christmas to live at peace with all men. And it starts with the decision. Oh, but Pastor Scott, you don't understand what they said about me. You don't understand how, how my feelings were hurt. You don't understand that I had these expectations, and they weren't met, and I'm mad. And whatever the situation is, you've got to be like the shepherds today, and you've got to say, God, I want you to be glorified in my life, and I want there to be peace on earth, and there's got to be goodwill to all men. And it starts with you, and it starts with a decision. Watch this. We've only got a few more days in 2019. And one of the worst things that you can do is to carry a grudge, unforgiveness, bitterness, and anger, and carry that into a new year. Church, it's called a new year. Happy New Year. And it can't be new if you're hanging on to old baggage. It can't be happy if you're still mad. So watch this. You've got a few more weeks and December is the perfect time for you to make things right with all men. And when you forgive that person who hurt you, God gets the glory. When you release that person who's wounded you, God gets the glory. And God has given you two more weeks to make things right. Don't carry hurt. Don't carry bitterness. Don't carry anger into a new year. Release it and join with the shepherds and say, glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth, goodwill to all men. And when you do that, God is glorified. Would you stand with me just for a moment? We're going to sing with the shepherds today. We're going to sing with the angels today. And as we sing this song in just a few moments, if you're angry with somebody, if you're mad at somebody, if somebody has hurt you and wounded you, don't carry that pain into the new year. Be like the shepherds. I'm sure they were rejected. I'm sure they were outcast. I'm sure they were kicked to the curb, but the shepherds made this declaration. God, I want you to receive glory, and I want there to be peace on earth and goodwill to all men. It starts with a choice. And together, let's join with the shepherds. Let's join with the angels, and let's declare that there is peace in this church. There's peace in your family. There's peace in America. And there's peace around the world because we are going to glorify God and live in peace and release people that have forgiven us. Can I get an amen? Let's sing this together. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Oh, come, all ye faithful.
you bow your heart with me as we, as we pray? We've had the, the children from On the Rock sing this morning. We've had the kids from Children's Ministry, PC Kids, sing this morning. As adults, we have sung this morning, and the message is this. There's peace on earth when we forgive. There's peace on earth when we, when, when we release people that have hurt us and wounded us. There's peace on earth when, when, when we, just, we, we bury the hatchet and we say, I'm going to move on to, into a, a brand new year. I want you today to make the choice, to make the decision that you're going to make things right with anybody and everybody that you can. You've got two more weeks. Forgive. Release. Give people a second chance. Don't hold on to that grudge. The worst thing you can do is go into a, a brand new year with an old hurt, an old wound. Ask God to give you the power and the strength and the ability and the courage not to live in fear and the courage to release people that have hurt you and wounded you. And when you do, when there's goodwill on, with all men, there's peace on earth and God is glorified. Let's pray. Father, we stand before you today. and For many, this has been a wonderful year. For some, it's been a year of challenge. And chances are, God, through this year, there's been things said, there's been things done, there's been unforgiveness, there's been hurts, there's been wounds. And Lord, I pray that we will join with the shepherds today. We will join with the outcasts of society. We will join with the shepherds and just declare, God, you receive glory when there's peace on earth and goodwill to all men. We choose today to forgive. We choose today to release. And we thank you for your peace that is available for us today. And we forgive those who've hurt us and wounded us. I pray that you'll give us that courage today. And we thank you for what you're going to do in the future as we release those people and we move forward with courage and confidence and boldness to what is ahead. I bless your people now today. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. That may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God give you the courage to forgive and to release so you can walk in freedom and peace. In Jesus' wonderful name and all God's people said, amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you.